Hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. A lot of people head out to the national parks or the mountains to enjoy a weekend of camping, but there are an awful lot of local hidden gems in the industrial areas, like a thin strip of trees between this warehouse and the railway tracks. So that's what we're gonna slip into tonight. Around these areas, you can count on most things to close around 6 p.m. That's when all the cars have left. And most of this warehouse is actually for lease. So there shouldn't be too many people around. There shouldn't be too many overnight deliveries. And dead ahead is where we're going. Just doing a quick scan for cameras on the building. And there's one way down that way. But that's okay. I don't think there's anybody watching it. Let's get into the woods. Well, signs are good already. Other people have been out here stealth camping and I'm gonna keep a cleaner sight than they did because we don't wanna ruin it for everybody else. Now, on the other side of this little strip of trees is a rail line. Hopefully not a main rail line because that'll make for a noisy night. Well, unfortunately, this little strip of park is not as picturesque as I'd hoped. There's uh, abandoned pallets and old bicycles, etc. So I'm going to head further down that way towards the abandoned warehouse. Uh, that one is still pretty active. It looks like there's shipping and receiving going on. So they're going to have security for sure. And this one probably will as well. Hopefully a little bit less. And on this side, there's going to be the rail police. So I'm going to have to be as stealthy as possible. That means getting the camo set up ASAP. So we'll head down here. Hopefully there's trees of the right diameter and distance apart to set up the hammock because that's what I got today. This looks to be about as good of a spot as I can hope for. So I'll get the hammock set up. Trees are spaced just about perfectly from my guesstimation. These Hennessy hammocks are by far my favorite for stealth camping. They set up really quick, they take down just as quick, and they don't stand out in the woods. They're a really nice color for stealth. So I'm going to throw on a little more camo on this side where the train tracks are. I'm a little more concerned about the rail police than I am about the security guard at the warehouse. Tonight's not going to be too cold, and the hammock is pretty comfortable, so I'm just going to use the sleeping bag, and I'm not going to add the sleeping pad in there, because that takes a while to pack up in the morning. This one just goes right in the stuff sack, and it's packed away in no time. That sounds close, but I doubt they'd have the siren on for me. Little old me. Shelter is set up and camouflaged. So step number two is a Mount Crushmore, of all things. <laughs> Stealth crack this. Not bad. It was actually pretty quiet for a can opening in the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to cool down a bit. I got this camo fleece on because it will get a little bit nippy tonight, but not too, too cold. Considering I'm mostly worried about the track side, I'm going to stick my head out there and see what it looks like. not bad it's not bad at all I'm like right here and if I wasn't looking for it I wouldn't see it
If it stays quiet on the warehouse side, I will stick my head out that way, but not right through the woods here. I'll walk down a bit and come back around. When I first get to a new spot, I like to just sit and feel things out a little. I've heard a couple of people over at a loading dock back there, but nothing other than that. So while we've got the time, I'll just go through the pack and show you guys what I brought for this lighter weight adventure than usual. Got the GoPro to film nighttime time lapse because there can be wild animals around here. Got bear spray just for the wildest of them. Got the little battery pack to keep things charged. Associated cables. The uh, flashlight, which we'll use sparingly. In here, it's mostly just food. I got um, a canteen, a liter of water, or a quart as it's known. I got some coleslaw because today it's going to be pulled pork. I got this kind of pre cooked pulled pork thing. Um, they're super convenient and I just have to warm it up. So I got cheap cook kit and uh, I'm using an alcohol fuel in there. And I'll actually put that in this really lightweight uh, Esbit puck style stove and I'll warm that up. And it's, of course, it's cheating because I got this pre cooked pulled pork in barbecue sauce, but it's not as if I'm going to be sitting here in the woods pulling my own pork. Uh, of course, fresh baked buns, because mm, try not to squish them. I got that air mattress I'm not using tonight, because the less there is to set up and tear down, the better, in my opinion. Aside from the trains, it's been pretty quiet. So I'm gonna try and find a way through these woods out into the parking lot to get a gander at our setup. Let's go and see what we can see. Yeah, it's completely, uh, completely empty parking lot, which is awesome. And I'm not even sure from this side where we're camped. So just take a quick peek here. This seems like the area. Oh yeah, I recognize some of that garbage. Oh yeah. So in through there, you can see where the camp is. Yeah, so we're gonna have to have the lights down low tonight, early to bed, and out early in the morning. And we're just gonna rely on the lack of people around to keep us safe. Now seems like about time to start warming up some pulled pork. Uh, we actually could eat this probably cold rid of the package. It's pre-cooked and everything, but it's not pleasurable. So we've got this cheap cook set that comes with a wing nut, of course. What could be more convenient than that? And to not cause a fire, we're gonna stick that underneath of there because that would be bad. And we'll see if, see if this works. Oh, it's got a wick. I think I've used these before. Um, I have in the past at one point. Okay. An invisible flame. What could go wrong? this in the pan. All right. Wow, that doesn't look good at all. Oh, look. It smells acceptable. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll work. Mm. Make sure we take every little bit of trash with us or else we're not gonna be welcome back again. Yeah. Yeah. That 
extinguish the fire, so we're gonna get back to the drawing board on this. This old tire should work perfect. Okay. So, with a little ingenuity from what Mother Nature has provided, that'll work just fine. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Let's get it down there. Absolutely perfect. So, those doesn't get better than that. Awesome. That cooked up just dandy. Don't need to start a tire fire out here, but that is certainly time to make myself a little pulled pork sandwich. Yum, yum, yum. And I even got a vegetable on there. Coleslaw. Yeah. So it actually pulled apart pretty good. Soaked up a lot of that uh, barbecue sauce. I'm feeling a lot better about this than when I plopped it out into the pan there. Yum, yum. Coleslaw. Pulled pork, delish. And this is the prime example of a good stealth camping meal, unless you're just warming up a can of something. Mm. Yeah, I'll eat a ton of these tonight. And then I can rinse out the pot, um, give it a quick wash, pack it away. And it's uh, the fewer things that are on the go uh, the fewer pieces of food prep that are required, the better. And this is actually one I'm going to start adding into the rotation of my regular camping trips because this is oh so good. When I'm doing a riskier stealth camp like this, where I've got security on that side, security on that side, I pack up everything as soon as I'm done with it. So all that food packed away, ready to go. Because if I got to grab that bag in this camera and book it to whichever side is probably best. I don't mind if I leave the, um, the camo netting behind. I'd much rather not leave this behind in the sleeping bag. But if I have to get out of here quick, then I'm not scrambling to clean up a big mess and I can just go. And we're gonna pray that doesn't happen. But if it does, I'll be prepared for it. And this is a bit of a slow stretch on the rail line. Um, this pulls right into town and then goes to the yard. So these trains are slowing down and that is at a speed that you could actually jump onto them. We're not going to do that, but some people definitely have, and that's what I'm guessing some of these camp remains here are, are people that were just hopping trains. So we're going to avoid that situation, and there will probably be a few rolling through in the darkest hours of the night, because I'm sure we haven't seen the last of those trains. We're losing our daylight. I haven't seen a train in a while, which is awesome, and the lights in the warehouse have lit up and that actually helps us because from the parking lot those lights will illuminate the outside of the bush and it'll make it hard for people to see further in. If there was no lights then any type of little light we make would be very visible to the people outside. So everything so far is going really good. Um, I haven't seen a car or anything drive through the parking lot. I think we're, we're A-OK -okay as long as uh, there's no rail police coming by on the other side. This is looking really good so far.
Yeah, you can see how slow this train is moving. This is where folks would jump off. Um, you wouldn't jump on because that's pulling right to the yard. But this is where people could be getting off. Uh, this would be the, the best place to do it. And of course, we're not jumping a train. I'm far too old and married to do that. Just about trying to tuck in for the night, but there is a police helicopter circling overhead. I'm sure it's not for me, but it doesn't make me feel good. Uh, there's trains switching back and forth pretty constantly. Oh, there's the chopper coming back. Um, this is about a good time to thank everybody for donating to the beer donation funds which might soon be the bail donation funds. Um, thank you all so much. Uh, I don't even know what more to say. I'm trying to keep a low profile here. I got a uh, small light on me, but it's mostly covered by my, my hand right now, so nobody should be able to see it. I'm sure the chopper overhead is not... Um, is not looking in thermal imaging for somebody camping out here. Or I sure hope not. Okay. I'm gonna tuck into bed here as soon as this train is gone. Okay, I've weaseled into the uh, hammock here for the night. I've got up there the bear spray and the cell phone. And I'm gonna zip this up in a second. Um, the trains have calmed down a bit, but they're also not really loud because they're going very slow. So that's a nice surprise. Uh, out on the train side, we got that camo there, so. It's doing its job, which is fantastic. And yeah, I'll just hunker down here because I'm so tired I could explode. But in the morning, we'll deal with this and I'll wake up and say, where on earth am I and what did I do last night? <laughs> so cheers everybody, see you in the morning. And let's get this zipped up before the mosquitoes get in. Well, good morning. Um, the trains aren't actually that bad when they're going slow. It was almost relaxing, I could say. That was uh, quite successful. I give this place um, four stars. Four stars out of five. This is a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot for the night. But I can hear the pitter patter of rain starting to fall on my tarp here, and it is. Mm, it's about. 7.30 in the morning um, so that's probably a good time to start packing up and getting out of here uh, there's nobody really showed up next door at that warehouse so that's a good thing and um, there's no there's no yard crew walking the trains so pretty much should be um, pretty cut and dry super easy pack up um, and get back to uh, get back to reality All packed up, not a moment too soon. There's been a lot of traffic driving by this visible spot here on the one side in the parking lot, so 
just doing a final garbage sweep to make sure I haven't left anything behind. I normally like to carry out as much garbage as I can that's already in a spot, but there's only so much I can do about our tire friends and old bicycles and stuff. So I'll grab what I can and uh, we're gonna get out of here. And uh, if you're liking these, please consider subscribing. I know I don't ask an awful lot for people to subscribe because I don't want to be annoying. <laughs> Uh, but I figure if you watch this far, I may have a shot at getting you to <laughs> click on that. So I'm um, going to get out of here. I don't see anything else we've left behind. And uh, the only risky part left is getting out of the woods uh, without looking too ridiculously suspicious. So let's go. While I remember, I do get a lot of questions about two things, poison ivy and ticks. Um, I live in Edmonton, Alberta, and it does get down to minus 40, et cetera, in the winter. That pretty much kills, um, kills a lot of the ticks. There are still some out here, but it's very rare that I would come across any, any ticks. I've never actually had one stuck onto me in the morning, and I've done a lot of camping, so. There's spots that are worse, and it's it's actually not bad around here, uh, northern Alberta. And the poison ivy, poison oak, that stuff doesn't grow here. Um, it's again one of the few upsides of having such cold winters, is that you know we don't get poison ivy, we don't get snakes, we don't get ticks. Uh, pretty much the only spider to worry about is a brown recluse, and there's not too too many of them. So here we are. Oh yes, the good people of the world are at work. Uh, the city is alive. Let's uh, let's get out of here. Car is right where I left it, which is awesome. And it's actually shocking how light this backpack is once all the beer and food and water are out of it. Uh, it's quite the thing. It's. Like I've got nothing at all. So uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you folks next week. Uh, the river's a bit delayed because we have a lot of work to do on the boat still. So uh, get used to a little more stealth before the river happens. Cheers, everyone.